Okay. So there are a plethora of negative effects of work intensification, namely decreases in psychological and physical health and job satisfaction. Um, there's an e increase in psychological strain. Um, there's also an increase in emotional exhaustion. There's significant costs for the employer and governments, um, as well as a decrease in delivery and creativity of academic work and morality. So of course, this is a very important topic, um, especially during COVID-19. Um, during the pandemic, there was an increase in work tasks and family-related duties. Um, COVID-19 saw a digital transformation and an increase in ICT demands. Also, was, um, during the pandemic, most people were working from home, and thus interpersonal relations were severely impoverished. So there's been some changes that have occurred that have likely led to work intensification. There are many definitions of work intensification. These are some from the past, um, since 2015, but there's many prior to that. Um, the definitions do differ, but what we do know is that work intensification is multifaceted. There is a dynamical and temporal aspect and it's perception-based. So individuals will often um, compare their work to previous times and if they can see that work has increased, it leads to feelings of work intensification. Um, thus, during periods of significant upheaval, there will be um, feelings of work intensification. Um, these definitions though are limited um, and provide a limited understanding of work intensification during COVID-19. Further, it doesn't really capture um, the experience of faculty. Universities have dual core functions, namely knowledge creation and knowledge transmission. Um, they are, unique in, as compared to other organizations in both in the sense that there's both teaching and research involved. So we have to pay special attention to the unique aspects of academia. In my opinion, it's important given that universities are the main drivers of capitalization, um, of knowledge, and academics direct um, economic development through academic entrepreneurial activities. So this is an important topic for us to consider. Thus, we're trying to understand specific research questions, namely what were the unique dimensions of work intensification during the pandemic and what factors might moderate the relationship between COVID-19 and feelings of work intensification. So this qualitative study um, both reproduces um, and expands the current research on work intensification. We aim to understand the underlying factors that decreased organizational performance and employee well-being during the pandemic. Essentially, we want to know if there are organizational interventions or academic characteristics that can negate the negative effects of increasing levels of work intensification. So I think it's important for us to understand work-life balance, particularly in the context of COVID-19, um, given that the lines were severely blurred at this point. Um, COVID-19 did widen the gender gap and inequality. Women were often expected to do a significant portion of the household chores. They had less room for um, um, uh, opportunity for growth, things of this nature. It's become much more evident during the pandemic. The pandemic also increased socialization, uh, social isolation, um, divorce rates increased. There was more reports of domestic violence and harassment, among other effects. However, we do know that the type and severity of the changes during the pandemic are different depending on individuals, regions, the organizations they work in, and industries. Thus, we thought it was important to consider the Canadian topic, um, the Canadian context um, of professors from different countries, um, specifically in universities. The academic setting is important given that knowledge work um, has become more boundaryless, more limitless, more extreme in recent years. Specifically during COVID-19, universities' operations and core mission and um, the experience of academics have um, significantly changed. COVID-19 did worsen issues such as scarcity, job competition, job control, and job demand. So what we hope to understand was how COVID uniquely led to work intensification. And we explore both organizational and individual factors that may impact the relationship between COVID-19 and feelings of work intensification. 
So um, we essentially um, did purposeful uh, um, sampling. Um, namely, what we did was there was a previous study that uh, interviewed professors um, and their work experiences. Um, we selected specific professors from that previous study based on certain factors, namely their sexual orientation, which departments they resided in, things of this nature. We contacted 21 faculty from the previous study um, and 15 individuals from those 21 agreed to participate. We conducted interviews that were semi-structured for approximately one hour and we uploaded them to NVivo. And to ensure interrelator reliability, we, did, uh, we deliberated amongst researchers um, the coding and we utilized thematic analysis, namely an iterative approach to inductive coding was utilized to extract the subnames. So these were the main um, findings, which I'll describe a little bit later, but mainly the dimensions for autonomy, online teaching, and efficiency, uh, managing work and life was a very significant one. Um, inauthenticity was another very significant one. Uncertainty, um, obligation to others, and significant impacts to their mental health. And the factors that moderated were independence, namely, um, whether individuals had families they had to take care of um, or other dependents, individual characteristics such as um, a positive outlook, things of this nature, self-care, which could be divided both as active and passive self-care, and the level of support, both emotional and instrumental. So in terms of the autonomy, there was always in um, the academic setting an autonomy paradox where individuals um, did have more autonomy generally as academics, but there was something that kept them as um, beholden to their work, something that made them work maybe harder than some other professions in which they had actually more control over their work. Um, so there is this self-inflicted control where individuals felt themselves working harder, regardless of the fact that whether they were being controlled or not, they felt it in um, a, a need to, um, on their own accord. But there was also the sense of administrative control. So this is an important quote. That was the university going, that's how we are going to do it today, follow it, the sentiment across the board. There's been this new way of micromanaging people. So a lot of individuals felt that since the pandemic, there was a significant increase in administrative control. There were also issues with online teaching. Um, if professors were older, for example, or just simply didn't have a lot of experience with um, the online teaching setting, it was very hard for them to learn how to adjust quickly to this type of teaching. Um, while some preferred it in some regards, for example, they were able to get speakers that were um, abroad that wouldn't, they wouldn't otherwise have been able to speak to the class. Often many noted that students were less engaged, which led to them feeling a sense of working expectation. Um, so one quote, it was mainly just the 24 seven connectivity with students, where if I think they were on campus, they'd ask the person sitting beside them, but they were not, who do you ask? You ask me and I cannot get away from work. So managing work and life is also a significant one, um, particularly if individuals had young children, um, they felt the need to choose between different aspects of work or home. Um, a lot of individuals mentioned that um, work hours became much longer and it became expected that they would be able to go on a Zoom call at maybe eight at night. And if they had young kids, they felt like they had to choose between their kids and between work. Um, but there's also the sense of inefficiency where they felt that there was a lot more um, administrative duties, technical duties that um, led to a lot more um, inefficiencies. But a big part was the inauthenticity. Um, I thought this was one interesting quote. Every Wednesday we get this cheerful little email. So after the first couple of times, I just delete it completely because it gives us tips on try doing yoga by a lavender scented candle for your mental health. I'm just thinking what would improve my mental health was if you stopped sending me these effing emails. So that was a big sentiment across the board where they felt as though even actions that you would consider maybe positive were not taken in that manner. Um, there's other examples, for example, um, non-tenured professors were explaining how they paused the tenure clock um, to give people more room, but a lot of individuals complained about that because they said, well, now I'm not getting paid as much as I should be, or other things of that nature. Um, 
if there was decision making, a lot of the professors considered upper management to be doing it in a, a not so pleasant manner, or the fact that they just didn't consider it to be in the best interest of the professors. So that was a big aspect. And there was a lot surrounding uncertainty. Um, uncertainty as to whether their contracts would be um, renewed, uncertainty as to what the future looked like, especially as COVID continued to change. Um, there was uncertainty as, you know, now that they were not working um, in the office, they felt as though maybe um, individuals would be filling their schedules more, even that they thought they had more time than they actually did. And then a big aspect was also the obligation to others. Not only was it maybe to their family, but it was also to students. Um, they felt, as this quote says, I feel super hopeless, helpless for the students. I know so many of them were struggling and I couldn't help. So you could see in a lot of these sentiments that professors really did care about their students, but that um, they really felt that it was out of their hands as to how much they could help their students. And there were a lot of, concerns about mental health at this point in time. Um, so there are, there are moderating factors that were identified. Um, even professors that didn't have students mentioned how lucky they were that they did, or sorry, if they didn't have children, were mentioning how lucky they were that they didn't have children um, because they recognized how much harder it was for the professors, especially those with young kids. Um, so that definitely worsened feelings of work intensification. Um, there were individual characteristics as well. This quote, for example, when I get up in the morning, I told myself it's going to be great. I'm going to finish my book. So a lot of the individuals who had this positive outlook did end up having more positive results. Um, there was self-care. What was noted that um, individuals who engaged in active self-care prior to the pandemic seemed to do fare better overall. They still stuck to their um, active schedule. They might have went for walks and it did impact their mental health positively. But individuals who engage in more passive self-care seem to give it up a lot more easily. They seem to replace that time with um, more work. Like for example, one said, even the notion of being able to um, soak in a bathtub, I just haven't had time. So it seems as though individuals who engage in passive self-care we're likely to not engage in it as much during the pandemic. Support was also a big piece. Um, it, both its emotional support and instrumental support was really important. Um, and it seemed as though individuals didn't feel as though they had that at the workplace. They did not get the instrumental support they needed. Um, they felt upper management was not there for them. Um, they also, I mean, given that they were working from home, they didn't have that connection with their um, with other professors or other individuals in the office. Okay. Um, so that was a, a really big element. So we noted el other elements. Um, the elements noted by McGee et al. on work intensification were prevalent, namely work demands and pace were intensified, work life issues interfered with the work realm, and there was a big aspect of the social impact. But we noted two new elements, namely that individuals felt as though they were a cog in the machine. Upper management took on a new form during the pandemic. They often felt at this point that their autonomy was removed. As one individual said, your hands end up being tied. Even if you try to do something that you believe to be the correct way of managing something, though you in essence have the autonomy to do something, but if you know you will be overruled, the false sense of autonomy. So individuals often felt um, less connected to the organization and to upper management. They felt as though they were a cogging machine. There was also a lot of paradoxes. For example, working from home, um, they did enjoy not, not having the commutes. Um, they enjoyed some aspects that online teaching provided. At the same time, they really, really were excited to return to um, on uh, in-person teaching. So um, as well, independence was considered a level of freedom and obligations to cater to dependence needs. Individuals often ex expressed, especially about their students, that they felt beholden to them. Um, those who were engaged in active self-care, as I said before, were differentially affected. They seemed to fare much better. Um, this research highlights the interplay of domestic matters, namely self-care and other non-work-related factors. Offers, it offers a more comprehensive picture of work intensification. 
It also really highlights the importance of supervisor authenticity. So it doesn't matter what actions they're doing, but how they perceive those actions. So it really highlights the importance of employee trust, transparency, inclusion, involvement in planning, things of this nature. Um, the last thing that we could note is the importance and extensions of family policies. As the work life um, realms have become more blended and more blurred, um, it highlights the importance of considering the home life when you're thinking about factors such as work and home education. And that's it.